Hello and welcome to another brand new episode of Between Two Berms, the Omaha Storm Chasers podcast where we talk about stuff and things. I am your host, Scott Pop, joined by my effulgent co-host, Andrew Asbury. What does that even mean? It means brilliantly radiant. I'll take it. I only looked up positive ones. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> it did take me a while to figure out how to pronounce it, but thankfully YouTube exists. This this might be my favorite word so far. <laughs> it's a good one. So how are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, coming up as the point that we're recording this, coming up close to Christmas. Looking forward to going back to Kansas City, seeing some family. Um, but yeah, it's, it's snowed a little bit the past couple days here as we're recording this on Monday, the 16th of December. Um, but you know, Omaha does a pretty good job of getting out and treating the roads. So yeah, I had no idea it was even going to snow yesterday, but I woke up and there it was. So just for the record here, we are going to have a new podcast on, this will come out on Wednesday, the 18th, and then we will take two weeks off. So we won't have one on Christmas or on New Year's Eve or New Year's Day would be that Wednesday. Either way, we will not have two podcasts on those days. I know you will all be disheartened to not hear our voices for an entire two weeks, but you know, take a look, take a listen back to some of our previous ones if you haven't already, and uh, look forward to the new year, some new topics. And now, message from a really short time ago in a stadium near you. It's a Star Wars flash sale. Uh, this podcast will be sent out on Wednesday, December 18th. And this flash sale takes place on December 19th and 20th. So if you're one of the early listeners, you will get the chance at $2 off for two days only. Star Wars night, May 2nd at 7.05. There'll be a jersey auction, fireworks, and a bands and brews courtesy of J&M Display. And that fireworks show is presented to you by Hy-Vee. The jerseys this year, my guy Scott worked on. Scott, tell them. Tell the people about it. They are some beautiful Darth Maul jerseys. You are not going to want to miss out on these. Maybe your best jersey so far. I'd agree. So if you're interested in coming to Star Wars Night this year, again, December 19th and 20th, flash sale, two days, $2 off. Take advantage while you can. All right. Today we are joined by a very special guest, president of the Omaha Storm Chasers and Union Omaha, Marty Cordero. Marty, how you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, can you pronounce the first word again? Effulgent. Effulgent. I like that. Okay. And then, you know, since you've been doing this for so long, just plug in best of over the next two weeks so people just don't, they don't miss you. That's true. We might be able to get some uh, short stints. <laughs> get some, uh, some of those practice podcasts we made. Might get those in there. And yeah, there you go. Uh, there you go. All right, so... Uh, but I didn't come up here to give you guys ideas. You know, I'm the ideas guy. I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll <laughs> he stop. is the think tank. I'll stop. Um, so, Marty, uh, give us a quick update on uh, soccer. Union Omaha is a thing, if people haven't heard. And uh, about baseball, our, you know, ourselves, Omaha Storm Chasers, and it being the 10th season coming up, that's pretty exciting. Well, it is. There's so many things going on uh, here at the ballpark. Uh, first off, it's the 10th season of Warner Park, which means it's the 10th season for the Storm Chasers, 50 for, 52nd season in franchise history, and then the inaugural season for USL professional soccer in the Metro, which will be right here with Union Omaha. So there's a couple things going on, uh, but uh, I'm eager for this Thursday night and this Friday, and I know we'll talk about that in a little bit, but there's so many things going on. Uh, you know, we have so much rhetoric going on in the world right now from a political perspective, from a social conscious perspective, uh, you name it. There's so many things going on. Baseball, a lot going on as well. But the entertainment side of baseball, the entertainment side of the, the movie side of the entertainment world, uh, and just being with family and friends over the holidays, I think, I think those are things we all need to get back to a little bit more and uh, focus on our Twitter as I'm sitting here scrolling through it uh, a little less uh, than we normally do. Yep. <laughs> uh, it's definitely a time for the, the family atmosphere and less of the scrolling through at, Facebook. All as the time. my grandma will say, if she sees your phone, she'll throw something at you. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be talking to the family when, when you're with them. For those who haven't heard Marty's come up story in baseball, we'll save that for another podcast. But today, today is all about Star Wars. Uh, we're recording this and hoping to post this on Wednesday, as we said before, just in time for the new release of Rise of Skywalker. 
Uh, I'm sure several of us have been waiting a while for this. Uh, very exciting. And yeah, just Marty, could you talk a little bit about um, kind of minor league baseball and their relationship with Lucasfilms as most minor league baseball teams have their own Star Wars nights, but I think we take it a little bit more seriously than others. Yeah, I mean, look, you've got a number of clubs that just do it right. Lehigh Valley, uh, Nashville Sounds, uh, and and I think that we do a good job here. Uh, obviously, there's always things that any club can do a better job with, and, you know, we've talked about those things and what are they. But, you know, I think uh, to Lucasfilm's credit, uh, contrary to, to some of the other movie houses out there, uh, the Marvel superhero movies and, and, and some of the other things tied in with Nickelodeon, you know, there's a, a lot of groups out there that just, they create an obstacle. It's almost like you have to do the 100-meter hurdles just to, just to be able to do a theme night in your ballpark. In essence, which, yes, it's content for us, but it's also continuing to spread and to grow what a franchise is. And in this case... Lucasfilm has made the determination that they really want to work closely with teams or at least make it easier for clubs uh, to do a Star Wars night and to promote it as long as you fall into certain parameters. And those parameters have been through jerseys. They want to be more classic than you know the more modern characters. Uh, they also want to approve those things. They want you to work with the 501st Legion specifically uh, if you can in your market and if there's a group. And you know any, any, anything uh, that, that deals with an auction or anything that deals with merchandise, which they do also allow and approve merchandise in your team stores, they want to make sure that it's tied in with a local charity whether that's make a wish which is a big lucasfilm and star wars charity or some of the others and to me all those things are tenants they're all core to what we do here at warner park with the storm chasers anyway so it's almost just like rolling out of bed and and you know and hitting 390 like george brit george brett did in in, in 1980 but um you know star wars is close to to my heart obviously uh, 1977 i was uh, four years old, and you guys obviously weren't around, but, uh, you know, my dad took me. Okay, boomer. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm close, but not there. Come on, give me a little credit. My dad took me on the second release of Star Wars when it was re-released on the back end of 77. I didn't go on, on, on the front end, but I was born in 73, so it was four, four and a half uh, when I saw Star Wars for the first time. And, you know, and I remember just being, like, amazed uh, at the trailer on on television, uh, one of probably three channels that we had at our house. But um, mm -hmm. and I'm like, what is that? I've got to see it. And so my dad took me to see it. And then uh, for Christmas, uh, you know, I ended up uh, getting uh, the mail in certificate that said, you know, you can you can mail this in, and then you get four figures back in the future. And you know, and you guys, I know, don't know a lot about toy collecting, but that was that was something that was really unheard of at that time to not actually have physically have the plastic, to not physically have, uh, you know, the vinyl. And the rest really is history because the early bird certificate, and man, I wish I had gotten the early bird and had not opened it and had sat on it, um, much like a lot of my toys. But toys are made to play with. Yeah. And, you know, and but that was really my start uh, for for liking Star Wars. Um, you know, I'm since I was young, there really wasn't a deep. Oh, I like Star Wars because of the social meaning. I like Star Wars because of the spiritual meaning. I like Star Wars because of its sci-fi. I just like Star Wars. I was a young peanut kid, and I thought it was cool, and I kind of grew into it. And you know, my lo my love for Star Wars now isn't that I know every single fact and every character's name and every character's backstory and that I've read every novel. I just genuinely like it. Mm -hmm. I just think it's something cool. Uh, I do follow it closely, uh, but I even follow or have gotten more into the vintage, open vintage toy side of things, and I guess to a degree now recently packaged in unopened vintage toys Mint. and figures. Yeah, some of them are. But to me, it's fun because it's something that, you can always do, and that's one beauty of, of social media and all the Facebook groups and the local groups. Uh, there was just a, a West Omaha toy uh, Comic Con yesterday. I wasn't able to get to, but that was something at the you know German American Society, just local here at 120th and L. You know, those are things that pop up all over, and it's it's a community. And mm -hmm. this local collection I bought, uh, a friend of mine who who is a who is a dealer and a collector as a junior in high school here in town. 
uh, and is he's very much the entrepreneur. He needs to make his grades, Wyatt, if you're out there listening. But he connected me with uh, this large collection, mm-hmm. uh, 60 and open figures, and ended up another gentleman that I befriended who is a plumber here in town who's recently moved uh, from outside of the metro into the metro area, specifically Omaha. And we said, you know what? Why fight over this? We went and bought it together. And I think that cooperative spirit is is genuinely and generally uh, what Star Wars fans are about. Right now, though, there's a lot of fan theories on what the movie's going to be like. Um, <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll a, get to that. There's a lot of comments on what the Mandalorian is or isn't. Uh, and is it good or is it bad? And is Disney doing a proper job or an improper job? There's a lot of those debates, but I think a lot of that is driven by, you know what, I need people to subscribe to my podcast. I need people to like or dislike. Of hot takes, for it, sure. There is, yeah. It's, uh, you know, I call it the Stephen A. Smith version uh, <laughs> some, sometime of, uh, of stirring the pot on, you know, on, on, on fan theories. Uh, before we get into some of those uh, theories, predictions, uh just general excitement about the upcoming film. Asbury, uh, how did you get into Star Wars? Yeah, so I would say similar to Marty in a sense, but skip ahead 20 years. <laughs> uh, in the re-release, and I think it was 1996, was probably some of my first um, you know, reveal to Star Wars. It was I just remembered having a original trilogy on VHS and a gold, you know, gold packaging, whatever that was, um, and that was kind of my first uh, intro into Star Wars. And then obviously with the Phantom Menace in '99, um, which a lot of people make fun of the prequels, and rightly so when you're looking at at it from you know an older perspective. But as a kid, absolutely loved that movie, and it just made Star Wars all the more. Uh, amazing to me and it was really more so like obviously it's a sci-fi you know base but you know you you watch these movies and you read some of the things the fan fictions and and things like that and it's it's much more fantasy Uh, it's just as much fantasy as it is sci-fi and I absolutely love fantasy stories the hero's journey and and things like that and you know that's I think that's really why I kind of grew into it into it because it's just so much action and adventure and you know there's politics to it there's religion to it there's just so much involved in the entire universe that there's so much to explore and that has yet to be explored i i agree and one one quick thing when you talk about episode one i like in episode one a lot to what we do in baseball episode one was about anakin it was about a young child Mm -hmm. it was about you know fast forward from i guess you could say 77 to 99 but primarily 83 to 99 so 16 years had elapsed jar jar binks goofy character Mm -hmm. padme one of the first strong female characters star wars was has always been on the forefront you know carrie fisher obviously i mean you go back then that was very unheard of but even even still in 99 so you take strong female character goofy whatever gungan whatever jar jar was but (laughs) primarily you take anakin as a young boy it was marketing to a whole new generation so forget the debate on how well the movie was written forget the debate um uh if it was a good film or not uh were there holes in it yes of course there's holes in any film (laughs) (laughs) but but it was it was an opportunity to market and and because at the time you know, my oldest son Gavin. You know, he he was he was young. He mm-hmm. he had he had just turned four uh, when we went to see that film, and uh, he loved it. Yeah. I was kind of like, okay, it's rebooted. Let's get to the next one, which ended up being obviously Attack of the Clones. But I think that is a parallel to what we try to do, and that is promoting to families and promoting to kids early on. And, and showcasing, even if they're not baseball fans right. by default. And that's why minor league baseball is so important, and that's why minor league baseball throughout the country really is the gateway for, for, for professional baseball as it relates to major league baseball. It's the prequels of baseball. It is. <laughs> it, it, it is. It absolutely is. Um, and, and to your point, I, it did exactly its job. It, it got me, the younger generation, to buy into Star Wars with the characters that it had. Um, and again, I think that's why it was so great and was because it t- really tailors to each generation. So Scott, what about yourself? Um, I'm not that into it as much as you guys are. I actually never like, I'm pretty sure I saw the Phantom Menace, but I was like, I don't know, three years old or something. So I don't remember it at all. But, uh, in college, my sophomore year in the dorms with my friends, 
Uh, at the end of the year, we watched all six of them in like a week or something. And then S- sounds like a great week. It was a great <laughs> week, and I was like, "Wow, this is amazing! I should so have been watching these a lot sooner." Did you go one through six, or do you four, five, six, one, two, three? What order did you go? No, we went from one through six. Did so you? we watched okay. the old ones first? Because there's then, a big debate out there on yeah. if you don't do it the right way. <laughs> Then you're not a real Star Wars fan. <laughs> well, and I've I've heard oh, of, I've man. heard of three different ways, right? You you watch the originals and then you go back to the prequels, like they initially came out. That's what that's what the argument is for right. the that if you're a real Star Wars. The fan. <laughs> the second option is to watch one through six, as someone like myself would have, you know, recognized and and appreciated. Uh, but there's also the argument that you watch uh, a New Hope. Empire Strikes Back, and then once you get that reveal about Vader, then you go back and watch the prequels, and you learn about Vader and how he got got to be who he is, and then you ro- watch Return of the Jedi, and it all kind of all comes together. So I thought that was an interesting way. I haven't watched it like that before, but it's it's on the to do list. I, yeah. I, I think if I'm suggesting to anybody for the first time, I'm gonna throw a further curveball. Not that you will surprise you guys. Let's talk I, about it. <laughs> I think I think you do four, five, six, Rogue One. Yep. Then one through three, and then and then seven through nine. I I think that's what I would do if if Rogue One uh, would not have been written. I I may not have that big of, of a debate whether you do one through six or the original way, uh, but uh, Rogue One to me uh, of the four films that have been out, mm-hmm. Solo, Rogue One, uh, Episode Seven, Episode Eight, Rogue One to me is by far mm-hmm. by far the best. Uh, I I even have it in my up in my top three, top four for sure, um, and I just think it was so well done. And there's a lot of filming. If you if you look at Rogue One and you look in, and see what's going on with the Mandalorian, there's a lot of the same to me, same concept. Uh, even some of the art. I think some of the best one of the best parts about uh, the Mandalorian is seeing the steel graphic art at the end on the credits. Oh, yeah. I, I mean the rolling credits with all the yeah. clip art that they, or the the art that they the storyboards is what they do. Absolutely, they use straight from the storyboards and they put it in the credits. It's incredible. Whoever the artist is is phenomenal, and the way that they match the actors and the characters to that uh, to that art is pretty identical. It's you know side by side. If it wasn't you know a picture, and you wouldn't know. I haven't seen The Mandalorian at all, so I have no idea what you're talking about, so but no, I'm so sure no, it's great. No spoilers? Oh, I, no spoilers? Um, I don't have Disney+, Plus. So I'm probably not going to watch oh, okay. it. But <laughs> You have to watch it with Asbury then. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe so. One big thing that people who may not know, uh, who may not have been in our front office before, you walk in, you get to about the, the marketing department, and you look straight up, and there is a huge uh, Millennium Falcon cardboard cutout. Uh, and then if you go and to Marty's office, there's all sorts of things around. There's a life-size Yoda from the original trilogy. It's it's pretty cool just to I've see. I've carried that bad boy around this ballpark a few times. <laughs> Where Where's Yoda on Star Wars nights? Yep. Um, but, you know, that's just in the office. Talk about what you have in your home. Like, is there an entire basement dedicated to this? Like, how much do you estimate you have? Oh, I'm not, I don't. I don't keep count. I don't keep score. <laughs> uh, I've been asked that a lot. I really don't know. But, uh, you know, I do have the entire uh, collection of uh, opened uh, vintage figures. I don't have all of the variants and, you know, and all, all of those things. Some of those are, are, are very expensive. Hopefully one day, you know, in time I will. Uh, but, again, I do it for fun, you know, and they're not all in mint perfect condition. Um, but it, it was something when I started back about four, four and a half years ago, Cass, uh, was younger at the time, six, I guess, and it was cool. Now it's not necessarily cool <laughs> at eleven, and he's in middle school. He likes it, but it's now it just ar- rolls your at, rolls his eyes at you. Oh, he does do that. <laughs> yes, it's at arm's length, and uh, but it's something that's fun. And there's a corner uh, downstairs in the basement that's uh, dedicated to it. But it's no, it's not the entire basement. <laughs> Um, but it, again, it's fun. As I mentioned earlier, you know, like the local uh, collection that mm-hmm. I just bought with another collector. You know, it, it's 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 about fun, uh, and it's about the hunt. Uh, there's there's if anyone's listening is a big Star Wars fan, and you know you want to learn more. There's a Facebook group out there called the Imperial Commissary, and Michael Havens and a number of administrators run that. And I connected Michael. He lives in Nashville with the Nashville Sounds, and now I would argue Nashville Sounds have the biggest and best. Um, Star Wars night of, mm-hmm. of any it's 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 massive he's such a big fan he actually started as a fan his own Star Wars convention uh, called in, in the wow. Imperial Commissary Comic Con. Okay. That's and a I, flex, I guess. And I, I, <laughs> I went to it this year. I was the second year of it, and uh, he's trying to decide if he's going to keep it in Nashville or not. But he did that 
um, because a lot of these conventions have gotten to be just money grabs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you pay, you know, a couple hundred bucks to get in, and then you pay 50 to 100 bucks for autographs, and a bottle of water is five or six bucks, and parking is 15 or 20 bucks or $25, and, uh, and the lines are, you know, hours long not minutes long and so he, he changed that and you know admission you know they have family passes there's free parking there's affordable concessions and the lines you know aren't as long because it's an upstart but again spirit of a true star wars fan is you take matters into your own hands and you create a star wars community and mm -hmm. man there's like 23 or 24 thousand people on this facebook wow. group and so that's where we buy and sell and and you know and 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 we look out for each other and and a great story and i'll move on uh, not mean to totally hog the mic uh, but <laughs> t t two years ago there was a young man um whose, fa whose father is in the imperial commissary and he got cancer and uh, they had to sell all their collection uh, because medical bills and those right. things well any anyway Word spread and uh, the uh, Star Wars group, the Imperial Commissary, all the members sent in figures. So the young man got back an entire set of 92 um, figures, orig all original figures. Wow. And, uh, that's really cool. It yeah. is pretty cool. And that's then amazing. it was beyond that. There were donations to GoFundMe and some other things. But that's that's really, to me, what Star Wars is about. It's not, it's not whether, you know, should they have written that Princess Leia died uh, excuse me, that uh, uh, Padme died giving birth to Leia or Luke. I mean, you know, we want to argue whether she should or shouldn't. Just enjoy what's there. Exactly. Yep. There, there, there's obviously going to be some flaws within. We're, that, that's not what this podcast is about. We're not binge mode. We're not out here dissecting every little minute of, of, a, of a movie. But um, like you said, it's, it's a great story, and it's there for you to consume, and it's really just about enjoying it and what it represents. The Rise of Skywalker comes out, what is it? Friday, Thursday night? Yeah. First off, yeah, I mean, when are you guys going to see it? I mean, the reality is, I guess, it, it, it the release date is the 20th, but, you know, they like, come out on like every other movie, they come out yeah. on Thursday. I don't I, get it. I, I don't get it either. I don't, I don't. I'm going Thursday night. My kids thought it was cool when they were younger to be checked out of school on Friday. They have to get out of school <laughs> early. Right. Now it's more important to go opening night. So we're going to go opening night, I think, 6 or 6.15 yeah. we're going. So I am going to do my best dodgeball impression and avoid all the spoilers until Saturday evening. Um, Good I, luck with that. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to have to traverse lightly. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go see it uh, Saturday around 4 at uh, here in Alamo Draft House. Me too. So let's go over some predictions. Yeah, you guys uh, get into this. I have really don't have any predictions. I'm just curious about what's going to happen. Um, but I'll let you guys take it away on the, the prediction and the, what's coming up in this movie. It will start and it will end. That's my <laughs> prediction of the movie. Uh, there will be good guys. There will be bad guys. Uh, there will be perceived bad guys and perceived good guys. Um, oh, that's you know, deep. I, I, yeah, I don't know. I, you know, I, the trailers, it's funny how people try to make predictions on the movie based on trailers. I mean, the trailers are simply to show action and and to put texture to you know to sets and in well, different lands and worlds as, as far as i'm concerned with star wars uh but yeah are there some things that will be answered from that of course but you know if if the trailers revealed too much then there wouldn't be any reason to go see the movie some of the star wars aren't they known for trying to mislead people well, or, or disney not showing what's happening disney yeah. in general yes. they yes. even like the marvel movies they inserted images that just aren't in the actual movie and yeah. they'll do like shoot two scenes one for the trailer one for the actual movie and there'll be two different scripts so are they going to do that for star wars i mean sometimes they do um so you can't really trust it and that's for sure but you know i mean let's go back to the basics why is it called rise of skywalker luke perceivably passed away in the pa uh, last movie spoiler alert if you haven't seen it yet that's that's on you um carrie fisher uh rest in peace do we know how much of the film she actually was able to shoot um because from reports that i've seen uh they wanted to make this movie mostly about her and you know she'll have a lightsaber and she'll be fighting and she'll do all this stuff she'll show all those uh jedi uh training at work uh but Obviously, that plan might have changed. Who knows? Um, could it be something about Ray? Could it be something about Ben, a.k.a. Kylo Ren? Um, there's obviously a lot of things that's going on, but who is the Skywalker do you think that they're talking about? 
Yes. <laughs> I haven't overthought it, honestly. <laughs> I haven't. I mean, could it be Ray? Yes. Uh, could it be Luke? Yes. Uh, I could it be Anakin? Yes. I, I, I mean, I, I, I don't know. It's a great question. It's fair, but that that's definitely something that's just been on my mind constantly. Uh, just why is it called the Rise of Skywalker? Uh, again, I, I think Carrie Fisher. Uh, hopefully she was able to film most of it and uh, but it sounds like maybe a lot of it might be centered around her but again she's not the focus of this new trilogy uh, it's mostly about Ray Poe and Finn so who knows where they're gonna go with that uh, the other thing that the trailers have been teasing hard is Emperor Palpy here uh, do you think he actually survived the fall in Return of the Jedi? Well, they told us he did. Well, what was that? Was that was that just in the trailers, or was that... I mean, obviously, you hear his voice in the new trailers, but um, do you think he actually survived? Do you think he's a Force ghost? Well, I mean, there's been some fan sites that have mm-hmm. said, you know, he, he's able to um, basically ho- go into a host body. So, like, a Force could, ghost possession. Yeah, could he could he have been <laughs> could he have been Snoke? Could he have been X? Could he have been Y? Could he have been Z? I don't know. Well, the the latest trailer for sure kind of hints at that. Um, he's talking to Kylo Ren, saying, "I have been every voice you've ever heard in your head. Uh, I have been Snoke. I have been Darth Vader." Um, it really makes you think. You know, it's is, is Kylo tripping out here, or is he uh, is he really been played his entire life? Um, you know, a, a fun thing to think about is could Palpatine be a clone? Um, there have been non-canon stories out there that suggests that he's cloned himself in the past. Um, obviously, they're not in the movies. They are um, solely one-offs or uh, novels or uh, maybe it's even in the Clone Wars animated series, uh, which I'm also a big fan of. They have a lot of cool uh, stories that they kind of weave in and out of there. But, yeah, I, I think the Force Ghost possession is probably a leader in my mind. I don't think it'll be like a, a Darth Maul survival story where he fell down this pit and he's uh, somehow survived off eating Empire garbage and he's now back. <laughs> so I don't think that's the case. But, um, I mean, he was a pretty powerful Force user, I think, on par with a Yoda or a Qui-Gon. There's no reason to think that he couldn't figure out how to be a Force Ghost. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> Great that is my expert analysis. <laughs> we'll get you on the flip side. We'll ask you. We'll ask you to critique it and what you think about it. Um, okay. And the last prediction I had here was uh, there's been a lot of reports out there that a lot of Star Wars fans are going to get upset by some new force power that's going to be introduced in this last movie. Uh, do you have any inkling on what it might be? I personally. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be that Force Ghost possession type of power, the the possession power. Um, but personally, I feel like it might be. They, keep, they seem to keep hinting at flying. The stormtroopers can fly now. They keep showing that visual of Ray doing somersaults in the air along with the modified Tie Fighter. Um, maybe are they hinting that Ray or somebody else who's Force sensitive will learn how to fly? Yeah, I mean, is that too outlandish? We talked about this the other day, and you convinced me that that's what's going to be. So. I'm, and again, I think they hinted at it in the previous movie too, with Leia getting sucked out into space, and she just kind of flew back into the into the ship. There, I'm, I'm wondering if that might be the new force power that people are going to get upset about. Is the fact that somebody learns how to fly using the force? But how do you harness that in an action figure? That's to me, <laughs> that's the big question. Because <laughs> everything they do, it all comes back to the merch that they sell. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm a huge fan of the modern toys, you know. I'm a little, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for Baby Yoda toys. Oh gosh, <laughs> and that's a whole nother. I think that's everybody's a whole ready for Baby story. Yoda. That's a whole nother story. But uh, uh, I, I, I did get a whole bunch of stickers for my kids. Uh, a buddy of mine. Uh, I mean, that's does, all. That's does, about all there is. is does just fan, does fan art, and yeah. uh, I got them last week. Oh, that's already, really cool. So yeah, so they're going to be in their stockings uh, from Santa Claus, of course. But uh, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know you know, force ghost and flying and all that. But again, I just want to watch the movie. (laughs) (laughs) All right. We will end with some quick favorites. Um, So think about it. 
You have to choose one. All right, Asbury, what's your favorite character? All right, I got two here. I'm going to choose a dark side character, and I'm going to choose just one that's everybody else because not everybody just has to be a light side character. They could be in the middle there. But uh, Darth Maul, he's my number one baddie. Uh, I, I know Darth Vader's got that hold there, but Darth Maul was so cool when I first saw him with the double-bladed lightsaber and all the acrobatics, and he took down Qui-Gon Jinn, which was supposed to be one of the most powerful Jedi at the time. Uh, he's my He's one of my favorite baddies. Uh, my favorite... Uh, other character uh, is probably got to be... Oh, that one's actually tough. I was thinking about this one the other day. <laughs> now I'm rethinking. I mean, it's, it's got to be somebody like Hans, Han Solo. OG Han Solo. I mean, he was he was the coolest of cool. Um, and, and, you know, he, he got all the ladies. He had he, ultimate freedom uh, being a smuggler. He could do what he wanted. Uh, plus, he had his best friend of Chewbacca. I mean, come on. Who doesn't want a best friend who's Chewbacca? So um, that's probably my favorite uh, other character besides Darth Maul. Marty? Okay, I'm going to answer two ways, but I'm going to go quick. Okay. My favorite action figure and my toy character is by far Boba Fett. Uh, closely followed behind is R5-D4 and uh, the R5. Imper- the real hero of New Hope, for people who don't know. <laughs> and uh, Im- uh, Imperial stormtrooper from hoth so a snow trooper those are my those are my f- actual characters but as far as the movie you know i think an underrated is the uh, chancellor palpatine uh because he was so conniving but so behind the scenes um i think it, i think he's underrated i really do but he he uh, is so like everything that he touched was all a part of his plan it and was it all worked out at the end it, it was incredible it did and so i think he's underrated as a baddie if if you will uh from a standpoint of of droids uh you know i go back and forth bb8 and r2 bb8's just cute uh, r2d2 is just a badass oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh and then from uh the light side from the jedi side you know you can go a number of different ways but you know, going back to 1977, I wanted to be Luke Skywalker, I mm-hmm. thought. And, and so for me, it is about Luke. I do think that Ray is an amazing character. I, I truly do. And I think that uh, Jen was an equally awesome character in Rogue One. I, I think her, she yeah. may have even been better than Ray to a degree, but of course... She perished on Scarif, so... Uh, R.I.P. to everybody in yeah, that cast. Yes. <laughs> they Ab- all died. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, spoiler uh, alert. But uh, those would be my answers. I don't know if that's what you asked, but uh, those are my answers. No, that, I think that's right down. And honestly, I, I think I want to make a quick amendment. Mace Windu, uh, sp- supposed to be this legendary uh, lightsaber uh, fighter, you know, the best swordsman in all the galaxy... I feel like we got cheated a little bit. We saw a lot of him in Clone Wars, the animated series, but I feel like we got s- cheated a little bit on screen with Samuel L. Jackson portraying Mace Windu, and just obviously he was a match for Emperor Palpatine uh, one-on-one. He was able to pretty much defeat him if Anakin hadn't stepped in. Uh, I feel like we could have used more of him. Uh, yeah. Yes, I'd agree. I, uh, I'm just going with one. My favorite's Chewbacca. He's just an OG. Uh, he's just there. <laughs> I was about to attempt the uh, sound, but you really have to go for it to yeah. actually get it right, and I, I stopped halfway. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Let's go around the table again. What is your favorite movie? Not top three, not top two. What is your all-time favorite movie out of the entire series? So, Scott, we'll start with you. I'm going to go with Revenge of the Sith. Very it's a good dark. Pick. Just dark. because of the it's ending scene when they're fighting in the lava place, yeah. whatever it's called. Arguably. Mus- Mustafar. Mustafar. Yeah, Mustafar. Arguably the best lightsaber battle. You are my brother. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 I still like. Arguably. Uh, I, I, ha- I can argue for some other. I still other like ones. Darth Maul's. In, that, in, that's actually my favorite. That was, that was pretty good. That's Either way, favorite. Ewan McGregor in that last movie is fantastic. He's phenomenal. He, he was. Might, he might be, other than uh, the actor who played Palpy. He might be the best actor in that trilogy. I'd agree. Asbury, yeah. favorite movie? Marty's alluded to it several times. Uh, it might not be the most popular pick uh, for traditionalists, but Rogue One, far and away my favorite. The story in that, the character development, 
uh, the way you get attached to these guys and then you see them drop one by one, it's so heartbreaking. You know they're going to die, but it's still an amazing movie. It is phenomenal. I absolutely love that movie. Um, and the fact that it is one of those new age movies and the the effects that they were able to produce was just so visually stunning. Um, I was just so impressed with that movie from top to bottom. Marty? Empire Strikes Back. Empire that's that's the classic. That's definitely number two on my list, and it's probably number one on most everybody else's. <laughs> yeah, I think it is, and, and I even boil it down to Hoth. I just... I don't know why. I don't really love the cold, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. There's just so much from Hoth, and um, I don't know. It was so different coming out of A New Hope, going right into Hoth, because that was the beginning, yeah. uh, you, know, you know, that beginning scene, and uh, I don't know. It's great. So the last thing we have here is your favorite vehicle slash spaceship. So for me, this was kind of tough between the speeder bikes that you see and uh, Return of the Jedi, or um, on the forest moon of Endor, <laughs> or the, again, from the same movie, Jabba the Hutt's like, pirate ship-looking landlocked vehicle that was going through the desert. Uh, every time I saw that uh, vehicle, it was just kind of gliding above the sand. It looked like a, uh, like a pirate ship of some sort his, his sail barge yeah the sail, the sail barge that's what it's called um it looked awesome it looked luxurious uh it had what looked to be sails was actually just a covering uh to protect you from the sun it looked really really cool um you know the whole pirates and sailing and um that type of stuff i find interesting as well smarty x-wing by far you know <laughs> x-wing uh it's universal it's classic it's uh it's been in every movie since uh, A New Hope. Um, X Wing is just awesome. Uh, of course, the Millennium Falcon is right behind it, uh, and then probably, I guess Slave One uh, would be after that, uh, and that Slave One is Boba Fett's ship. That one's really cool. Uh, did Boba was that Django's before him? It was. Yeah. Um, Really loved that ship when it uh, appeared in Attack of the Clones. Um, and obviously when it was following around Han on uh, Empire, uh, going through the, the asteroid, asteroid field. field and, yeah, all that stuff. It was, that was a really cool ship, too. Do you even, do you even have a gander here, Scott? You can say the Death Star. Were those uh, <laughs> those big, like, elephant-looking things? Oh, the AT, ATs? Sure. Yeah, the ad ads. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. I like those. They look cool. I'm just super excited for Saturday. I know, Marty, you're super excited for Thursday. Um, you know, Star Wars is one of those stories. You can love it or hate it, but those who love it, you know, this this is our time of year. Thanks for joining us, Marty. It's been great, and uh, great job with the podcast. Let's keep it rolling. Uh, baseball do. is right around the corner. Stir it up. Star Wars night, Saturday, May 2nd, 2020. Stir it up. <laughs> As always... Follow us on all of our social media feeds for some real top-notch OG content at OMA Storm Chasers on Twitter and Omaha Storm Chasers on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok for all the views. We just hit 3.3 million views on one of our TikToks over the weekend. Super stoked about it. However, it did kill my battery, so I'm also a little bitter. Worth it. Make sure you give us five-star reviews. Maybe even leave us a comment. Send us uh, a DM, an email. Let us know what you're thinking, um, and we'll make changes. We are the People's Champs, and we want to hear from you. All right. Say bye, Asbury. Okay, bye. We will see you next time on Between Two Birds. Give Chewie a medal. Do it. Also, Baby Yoda, cutest thing. Kill ever. him. No. <laughs> I'll kill you. <laughs>